the trend is your friend. We've all heard that saying. And this phrase is true, well, until it's not. Most traders fail to recognize that one news item or one institutional investor can change the direction of a trend at any given moment. Typically, the longer a security trades in a single direction, the less likely it is to continue in that direction in the future. When we see a trend, we are literally looking at past results in an effort to predict future price movements. But when we trade, we are trading what is happening right now. But what if you could get into a position before the new trend was even formed? If trend reversals take place often, then wouldn't it make sense to have a reversal strategy? Today, I wanna to talk about common trend reversal indicators. I'll use an RSI indicator to illustrate how you can use RSI levels to pinpoint exactly where reversal patterns take place. Additionally, if you are familiar with the content on this channel, you already know this reversal strategy will incorporate an indicator that you've never seen used in divergence trading before. And stick around until the end of this video and I'll discuss how to select symbols for trading this way. All right, by now on the channel, you've seen we've covered a lot of technical indicators. We've covered a lot of techniques and most of the techniques revolved around trend trading. However, one of the most profitable strategies that you can have in your arsenal when you trade is the ability to spot and identify and take advantage of reversals. So today, that's why I want to talk about trade reversals. They're so important because to be a complete trader, not only do you need to know how to make money in a trending market, but you also need to know how to make money in a consolidating market. But before you get to a consolidation, there are reversals. And there are reversals outside of consolidation. And honestly, intra-trend, there are reversals that take place rather frequently. One of the best ways to find those reversals is by using a divergence. Now, most videos on YouTube talk about divergence and they go right to the RSI and they explain to you how an RSI makes a divergence. Today, we're going to use the RSI, but we're not going to use it in the traditional sense. So the RSI will be important when we're trying to identify reversal opportunities, but we're not going to look for a divergence on the RSI. So before we get into that, let's just talk about what a divergence means. So if we want to know what a divergence is, let's just type it into Google. Divergence. The definition of a divergence says the process or state of diverging. So let's look at what diverging means. Diverging means going in different directions or separating. Okay, so looking at charts. Right here we have a daily chart of Apple. And we have added an RSI indicator. So let's take a look at the inputs for the RSI because I get these questions all the time. The RSI is based on the closing price. The length of the RSI is 14. Oversold is set to 30 and overbought is set to 70. There is no 50 line on this RSI. I know if you've seen a previous video, you know I have a 50 line, but we're not using that for this illustration. So the RSI is on the chart. And as you can see, we have an overbought area right here as the RSI turns red and goes above the level of 70. This is an overbought area. The reason it's really important to use the RSI when looking for reversal opportunities is that if you're looking for a reversal to the downside, meaning the price has been going up and you want to trade going the opposite direction, the first thing, step one, would be to use RSI and find an area where the RSI has been overbought. So the RSI will be over the level of 70. And you can see that here. Why this is important is this is showing, remember everything above 50 on the RSI is an uptrend. This is showing that the RSI has been in a very strong uptrend. Typically, the longer a trend goes, the weaker it becomes. So finding an RSI that's over the 70 level means that the stock has been going up for quite some time and it's reaching a level of being overbought. Okay, now the secret indicator that we're going to use for our divergence. This is a DMI indicator. It stands for Directional Movement Indicator. I'm going to go ahead and show you those settings as well. 
So for the DMI, we are going to take the ADX completely out of this. We're only looking at the DMI. So the ADX does not matter. Typically that comes on the DMI indicator. We want a length set to four. I think the default setting may be 12 on some platforms. It may be 14 on some platforms. It may be 20 on some platforms. We are going to use a length of four. The next thing that you're gonna notice when you look at these charts is that there are two horizontal lines, almost like overbought and oversold areas. I want you to draw these lines at the levels of 60 for the high line and 10 for the low line. Okay, I'm gonna say that one more time. A level of 60 for the high line and 10 for the low line. Now we're gonna treat these lines just like overbought and oversold areas except for Actually, that's not true. It's a little bit different. You'll see when we get into it. Step two is to ensure that the green DMI plus has reached a level of 60 or greater. All right. Now your DMI plus doesn't have to be green. It can be any color that you want, but you want to make sure that the DMI plus in an uptrend reaches a level of 60 or greater. That's step two. Next, what we want to see is that the DMI plus goes from a level above 60 to below 60 while the price is decreasing. So here we have a slight decrease in price and we see that the DMI plus declines to a level below the area of 60. So step three is that you have a DMI plus that leaves an area above 60 on the DMI while the price is declining slightly. Next comes the divergence part. Here, we want to see a higher high in the price. So here was our previous high, right here. The price reaches a new high, and the DMI does not reach a new high. So let me say that one more time. We want to see that the price is making a new high while the DMI is not making a new high. So this is the diverging part. So what this means is that the DMI indicator is disagreeing with the price because while the price is putting in a new high, the DMI is still at a lower level than it previously was. So it is not at a new high. What we're looking for now is a simultaneous move of the DMI plus and the DMI minus. All right. So let's back up and go through these steps again. The first step is that you want to see this RSI at a level of 70 or greater, meaning that it's overbought. Next, you want to see the DMI plus pass the area of 60 on the DMI indicator. The next thing you want to see is the DMI declining from an area above 60 to below 60, while the price is declining as well. The next step is that you want to see a new high in price. So the price increases, and you want to see a high in the DMI plus that is not higher than the previous high. So in this example, the previous high is 77.64. Here we have a high of 71.52. Previously it was 77, now it's 71. Lastly, we wanna see a simultaneous move. We wanna see the DMI plus move from an area above 60 to below 60, and at the same time we wanna see the DMI minus move from an area below 10 to above 10. We we'll see that right here, okay? So the DMI plus moves from an area above 60 to below 60, while simultaneously the DMI negative moves from below 10 to above 10. This is our entry point, okay? So we're gonna find the entry right here. In this particular trade, the price went up from here, okay? So it continued to go up. What we are gonna do is we're gonna hold on to this position until the DMI plus gets to an area that is less than 10, all right? So this red candle right here would be our entry point. Assume we got in at the end of the day. The close of that day on Apple is $125.01. If we take the DMI plus indicator all the way forward until it reaches an area of 10 or less, here it has a value of 9.06, that would be a good exit spot. We're not looking at the RSI, we're using the DMI. And we're taking the DMI from the entry point to an area where it is below 10. So if we entered, if we entered here at a close of 125.01 and we exited here, this is a close of 112.82. 
This would have been your opportunity to short this stock. And if you don't short stocks, this would have been an opportunity to buy puts. And if you don't buy puts, this would have been a great opportunity to sell your long position. See, you don't have to enter into these trades to go to the downside. What it is is an indication that the trend is stopping and a reversal is taking place. So you don't have to trade it to the downside. You can simply exit your long position. Or if you're long in a position and you sell covered calls, this would be a great opportunity to sell covered calls and bring in some income or ensure your position as the price falls. So there's a lot of uses for divergences. These things are very, very important. And I'm going to go over several examples. All right, so we're going to go over to the Forex market for this next example. And we're going to use the ticker symbol EURUSD. E-U-R-U-S-D. Daily chart again. Notice that I'm using the daily chart. I get a lot of questions about does this work on a one minute chart or a five minute chart? Not nearly as well. It just simply doesn't. You'll make more money. You'll, you'll pay less commission. I know a lot of you trade on commission free platforms. I would urge you not to do that if you can afford not to do that. The executions are horrible. All right. But look, you'll, 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 you'll accumulate less stress, you'll accumulate less commission, you'll trade less frequently, but you will make more money if you trade larger time frames. You just have to be patient. I understand it. Sometimes you just feel like you have to be doing something. Well, go do something else. Don't trade, all right? Don't trade. Wait on your setups. Trade your setups when they arrive. So in this example right here, here's the trade on 3-10-2020. So let's start. Step one is the RSI above 70. Yes, the RSI has reached a level of 70, all right? At that time, we are also reaching a level above 60 on the DMI plus. So we see the DMI moving above 60. We have our RSI shortly after the DMI goes above 60. Look, I, I get that's not the exact order. You, you already see the DMI coming below 60. You can't be engineers here. You can't be, you know, checking the box, checking the box, checking the box. Sometimes trading isn't that mechanical, all right? Most of the time, trading is not that mechanical. Give yourself a little bit of leeway here, okay? What we're doing is we're observing things on the charts to get a general idea of what is going on. This is not an exact science. This is why you cannot code, you cannot code these bots to trade very successfully. Everyone's looking for this back-tested strategy that you can automate. You're not going to make money doing it that way. Or everyone who could code could just you know, take a look at some charts and they, be, they would become billionaires. They would become multimillionaires. You don't know anyone who has become a multimillionaire coding a bot to trade the market. You just don't. I mean, and if you do, you're, you're not. <laughs> Anyways, I'll drop it. The point is the RSI is above 70. All right. The DMI has reached a level of 60 or more. So what do we want to see next? We want to see the DMI leaving the area of 60. Yes, it is leaving the area of 60. We have a slight decline in price. It's only one red candle, but it's a slight decline in price. All right, so we have a slight decline in price. The DMI plus is declining. And then we put in a new high. This first green candle puts in a new high. And then we put in another green candle, another green candle. All right, and notice that we're significantly higher than this previous green candle and I'm looking at the area where the DMI was last above 60, okay? We're significantly higher than that area, but the DMI is not where it was previously. It's just barely reaching the 60 area here. Next, next we have a move where the DMI goes downward. The DMI goes downward from an area of 60 below, and simultaneously the DMI negative the DMI minus is moving from an area below 10 to above 10. This is your entry right here. Step one, RSI above 70. All right. Step two, DMI above 60. Step three, DMI leaves the area of 60 and goes downward while there, the price goes down slightly. Next step, price puts in a new high. All right. While the DMI plus is not putting in a new high then you have a simultaneous move from above 60 to below 60 on the DMI plus and from below 10 to above 10 on the DMI minus. This is your entry. On this position, the EUR USD on March 10th, 2020, the close is 1.1283. All right. 1.12830. Oh. 
or zero. Now we're going to take the DMI plus all the way down to an area where it is below 10. That is right here. Okay, so if we entered at one, or we shorted here at 1.12830, we get our exit at 1.09968. Okay, these moves are fantastic. They're incredible. Okay, and if you want to stay a little bit longer, you can. If you, if you want to take the, the actual DMI plus to an area that is, you know, say below eight, that would give you another candle in this situation. All right, again, you don't have to be exact. Try to make this fit what you see. Try to make it fit into your trading plan. Try to make it fit into your trading style. I make these videos trying to help, and sometimes I feel like people, you know, they get very confused because they think it has to be exact every single time. Oh, well, it, well, it, well, it didn't do it exactly the way you described. It doesn't have to be that way. Give yourself some leniency. We're looking at generalities and we're working with probabilities in the market. Okay. I'm painting a broad picture just to help. Let's go to the next example. All right. This is GLD. This is the spider gold trust. We're going to go back here to August 6th, August 7th of 2020. So, the first time the DMI plus goes above 60, it's July 22nd, 2020. All right, we have our RSI, step one. It is overbought. It is above the 70 area. You can see that here. The DMI plus goes above 60. Okay. Next, we have the DMI leaving the area of 60 and going downward while there's a slight decline in the price. Yes, and you see this decline, it is a green candle, but from the previous day's close, the price went down. There's a wick on this candle, it went a little bit lower, okay? It ended higher for the day, but it's still a slight decline, and we're seeing the DMI plus have a decline as well, from above 60 to below 60. Next, we want to see a new high in the price. Right here with this big green candle, we get a new high in the price, and the price continues to climb. While the price climbs, the DMI is never able to make it to an area that is as high as its previous high. Its previous high was over here at 75.96. Okay, so 75.96. Here, the highest we got was 71.08. All right, and as we move forward, right here on August 7th, we have a simultaneous move. The DMI plus moves from above 60 to below 60, while the DMI minus moves from below 10 to above 10. This is your entry. This is a closing price of 190.81. 190 190.81 on GLD, August 7th, 2020. Remember, we are going to take this position until the DMI plus goes below the level of 10. Okay, so if you took it from here, one, two, three days later, we've already moved from 190.81 to an area of 179.10. It's a really, really good move. However, the DMI Plus is not yet below 10. There's no problem with you exiting here. I'm going back to that same thing again. It doesn't have to be so mechanical. If you are happy with your profits, then take your profits, all right? You're good right here. You don't have to wait. But if you did wait, we would come all the way over here. You would waste all this time not trading other symbols and other setups. However, eventually, eventually you will go below the area of 10. And that's over here on September 8th, 2020. And that's the closing price of 181.29, which is not even as good as this closing price right here. However, this is the setup. This is just another example. Next example, JD, daily chart. We're going to do this again. We have our RSI going above 70. It's overbought. All right. As the RSI moves above 70, you know, we have already previously been above 60. We're making our second move above 60. The previous high on the DMI is 64.36. Okay. So we, we, we are above 70 on the RSI. We're above 60 on the DMI. We have a slight move down on the DMI. And see, here we go. There's another, another example. The price never really moved down. Okay, the price never really moved down here. That's a step that I have in this process. I'm going to show you an example. This is an example where the price didn't move down, you know, after the DMI first went above 60 and came down, but this this still works out just fine. So again, study this for yourself. Okay, study this for yourself. I can only give you generalities of how this sort of looks when it sets up, okay? It's not picture perfect every single time, all right? You're not going to be able to code this exactly right in, into some algorithm. You're not going to be able to do it um, because there are other things that you can add to this additionally. 
So uh, the way that I'm describing it in this video, you could probably code it, but you're going to miss many, many opportunities just like this one, okay? You'll get some that fit exactly right, but you'll miss a lot of really good opportunities. Right here is a good opportunity. So what happened was the DMI fell, the price stalled slightly, maybe a little red candle here, but the, the movement was up. The point is, is the price continues to rise and the DMI comes to a, a, a next level of 62.69 when previously it was 64.36. So as the price has risen, the DMI is not able to catch up, all right? And what we have here is we have a move simultaneous. The DMI plus moves from an area above 60 to below 60. The DMI negative moves from below 10 to above 10. This is your entry point. The entry is at 79.30, okay? August 27th, 2020, 79.30. As we move forward, we get some higher movement, okay? We don't we stay in the trade because the DMI is not yet below 10. When the DMI reaches a level of 8.4, remember we entered at 79.30. When we're over here at 8.4, it is 74.18, and that is September 11th, 2020. All right. This is going to bring up a question. The question is, well, how far should we let it go against us before we cut our losses? It's up to you, okay? If you put a tight stop right here, this you're going to be stopped out of this position, all right? It's, it all depends on how you want to mitigate your risk or how you decide to trade. And I can't tell you that because some people short stocks. Again, some people are selling covered calls. Some people are buying options. And people are essentially you know, setting their risk tolerances differently for each trade. Um, in this situation, as we stayed in the trade, all right, we continued to go forward. The price put in a new high. However, the DMI was not putting in a new high. The RSI is not putting in a new high either. This is a double divergence. So why would you allow yourself to stop out of this trade because you place protective stops on every one of your trades, real stops instead of mental stops, when you should be able to look at your technicals and decide, is this a really a true move to the upside or are we still setting up for a reversal in this in this situation this is a weak up move i wouldn't be scared of this move and i wouldn't have a stop in place to stop me out okay i would make that call after i addressed the charts and figured out essentially what my next move should be i wouldn't be afraid of this new high because these indicators are not putting in a new high i would still be waiting on a reversal and we do get that simultaneous move down it's not above 60 but there's a move down on the dmi while there's a move up on the dmi negative there's a move down on the dmi positive and this is a much better entry point and we can take this to the downside okay but so many of these things again if you were trying to code this would you put a stop or not put a stop it's literally, you're not going to be able to do that. So the point is, is use your skills, build your skills. Don't look for a one, two, three, four, five step process that you can repeat over and over and it's going to make you rich. You're never going to get it. Don't pay for it. Don't fall into that trap. You have to combine all of your trading knowledge, everything that you can learn and you assess the market as it looks right now, because the way it looks right now, it's never actually looked before. There's similarities, you see certain patterns repeat, but they're never identical. And if they are identical, it's few and far between, it's very rare. So the point is, address the position as you are in it. Take it candle by candle. Okay, I think I harped on that long enough. XLY, uh, I'm going to go a little bit faster here because this video is going on and on and on, but I just want to drive this point home, okay? This video is less entertaining. It's more of a lesson, all right? I'm trying to teach you something here. Um, I'm not trying to razzle-dazzle you with a bunch of B-roll and, you know, just editing stuff. I, I want to show you. I'm trying to show you how to trade. All right, so <laughs> DMI is above 60. RSI is above 70. Yes. Step one, RSI above 70. DMI is above 60. The DMI moves below 60. The price moves slightly down. The price puts in a new high. When the price puts in a new high, the DMI is not at a new high. Previously, the DMI was at 63.97. Now the DMI is at 59.11. All right. Simultaneous move down on the DMI plus while there's a move from the DMI negative to from less to 10 to above 10. This is your entry at 148.88. Let's take it down. Take it down. DMI is now below 10. 141.51. There's your move right here. Okay. Last example, 
C H W Y. Some of y'all have said in the past, I wish you'd do more examples. Here are your examples. I've showed you my charting parameters. I showed you, I tried to make it into steps. Again, I know I keep going on about this. I know you want to see steps, but sometimes I don't do steps because the steps get you in trouble because you just want to follow them every single time. Well, step three wasn't exactly right or step five. Okay, just please do yourself a favor and stop with the steps. But I'll use them just as a general outline. Here we go. Back in August of 2020, we have CHWY. It's above 70 on the RSI. It's overbought. All right. The DMI is greater than 60. This move declines. The DMI comes way down. See, this example is not like the rest of the examples. They don't all look identically the same. It takes, it takes weeks for this one to put in a new high. It starts putting in a new high. It just so happens that when it puts in that new high and the DMI goes back above 60, it only ever reaches a level of 67.65. Previously, it was 71.12. Then we have a simultaneous move. The DMI plus coming from above 60 to below 60. The DMI negative moving from below 10 to above 10. This is your entry point, 61.94. And you could still be in this trade because we don't even have a clear exit yet on this trade. But if you wanted to take profits here on 9.11, great. If you wanted to take profits here on 9.21, that's fantastic. All right, just because the DMI plus does not go below 10 doesn't mean you can't get out of your position. Life happens. Maybe you're going on vacation. Maybe you want to take a break from the market. You know, maybe you're doing something where you can't, you can't, uh, you can't get good internet service or something like that. Exit your trade. Take your profits. All right. That's that's what you do. This thing is fluid. All right. You gotta you gotta learn this like an art form. Okay. This is something you practice. You practice like you would martial arts. You practice like you would an instrument. You practice like you would learning how to draw or paint. Okay. That's what we're doing here. You're learning the characteristics of a fluid market that really is unpredictable. However, you know, we're taking things and we're stacking them together to try to give give ourselves a high probability of success. All right. And that's what I'm trying to show you right now. So this is how, you know, we're going to we're going to stop here. I've given you one, two, three, four, five, six examples. I included a four X example. If you stayed this long, thanks. I've been rambling for a long time. I want to show you how to get these symbols. OK, so how do we get these symbols? Okay, so if you've stayed this long, I appreciate it. And as promised, I want to show you how you find symbols to trade. All we are going to do is we are going to find symbols. We want to find stocks that move, and we want them to move as large as they possibly can. I don't trade penny stocks, okay? I don't trade, um, I don't trade any stocks that trade usually less than $50. And what I'm looking for is a massive amount of volume because I want to see a huge move. I trade options, okay? I trade options, and that's one of the primary reasons I look for stocks in this way. But if you're going to long short stocks, it's also a great way to do it. So what I'm doing is I'm setting up a scan where the last price is greater than 50, and I want to see that the volume is, I just have 100,000 for the day. The point is, is I'm going to get a large list of stocks. So when I, when I run this scan, so I'll just show you, I'll run the scan just like this. The scan has been run. And I just got a list of 1,100 stocks. I'm not going to use 1,100 stocks. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take the volume tab. I'm going to sort it so that I have the highest volume first and the lowest volume next. And then I go through and I use these symbols. So if I want 50 symbols on my list for the day or 20 symbols or 100 symbols, all I have to do is go to that number. So I can go look at the stocks 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And I'll go all the way to a level of 50 if I just want the first 50. Typically, I'll use the first couple of hundred. So I'll go all the way to, say, 250 or maybe 300, depending on how many setups I can find uh, while looking in the first areas. So that is about it for the day. I hope that this was helpful. I hope that this format um, is received well. It's just I want to get more into teaching directly. So I know that some people like the presentations that I have on the channel, but there are other people who are expressing a deep desire to actually learn. And so I think that this more hands-on approach is one way that I can help achieve that and accomplish that. So leave me some feedback. Um, if you have not subscribed yet, please subscribe. I get a lot more 
views on videos than I do than I have subscribers. So a lot of people are watching without subscribing. So please subscribe, support the channel, and I'll continue to teach you different ways that you can grow as a trader so that one day you can combine all of your knowledge into a real-time perspective of the market and you can find opportunities to take advantage of, high probability opportunities that you can take advantage of and make money. So I wish you well and I hope that all of you have profitable weeks in the weeks to come. Thank you.